Hey guys, welcome to episode 25 of Between Two Couches. I'm joined by Calm today. Hey Calm. Hey Derek. Sweet <laughs> uh, t-shirt, Derek. Thanks Calm. Likewise, nice t-shirt. <laughs> Today's episode we're talking about mental health and in particular self-compassion. Um, so Colin, what is self-compassion? So um, sometimes people think that you should have high levels of self-esteem and the problem with self-esteem is it's always based off external things. I'm great because I look a certain way in the mirror, I'm great because I earn a certain way, drive a certain car, have a certain number of friends, whereas self-compassion is all internal focused. And a lot of work comes from Kristen Neff and all of this, so we're completely um, giving her full credit for the ideas of Kristen Neff, self-compassion, that it's basically treating yourself how you treat someone you care for. And that's been proven to up your levels of resilience, proven to help you make, be more successful than just you know, trying to build someone's self-esteem. Okay, um, so in Irish culture, like culture in general, I suppose, like across the world, we kind of feel that we need to kind of keep pushing ourselves, keep pushing and pushing and pushing to a higher standard. Is doing this or self-compassion a sign of weakness, would you say? No, so it's kind of like a lot of the things that it's the exact opposite of what you think is going to help you get there, you know. You would think that being really, really driven and really, really aggressive towards yourself, you know, I'm going to hold high standards and I'm going to make sure I hit my training targets, I'm going to make sure I hit my sales targets, I'm going to, you know, why can't I be better, why can't I read a book, take care of my pets, have time with my family, go to job, look great, you know, smell great, why can't I do all these things? And that, that pressure on yourself, you might think, leads you to do more, but, you know, actually doesn't because then if you get derailed slightly, you start berating yourself. And there's never a case where you saw someone turning around to someone else and going, you are a fucking idiot. Like, how are you so stupid? You would say that's okay, but that's what we say to ourselves. So it's all about the voice in your head and essentially being nice to yourself. Okay. You know? So that was actually my next question. What actually is self-compassion then? Is it yeah. just being nice to yourself or is there... By the way, you're not a fucking idiot. Thank you. I All appreciate right. you for that. Yeah. <laughs> for anyone who stopped watching after that, well, you're not listening to this bit. <laughs> so, um, again, according to Kristen Neff, um, and she's the sort of the expert on it, she's written a book on it, it's a good TED talk on it as well, is that, number one, it's, you know, a little bit of empathy towards yourself. You know, it's the idea of understanding that this is universal. So, sorry, I'm mixing them up. Let me start again. The first thing is, is a recognition or being mindful of it. Be mindful that this is a feeling, and it's just a feeling, and you don't have to attach a story to it. The second one is, you know, the idea of treating yourself with a degree of kindness. Again, think about it. What would you do if it was your best friend? What would you do if it was your loved one? You know, if your mother couldn't stand up from the chair, you know, you'd be nice and kind to her. Okay. Same way if you can't stand up from a back spot, you know, treat yourself a little bit kinder. And then thirdly is recognizing that we all struggle. We all have that suffering. Wrestler, that your feelings aren't unique to you. You okay. know, it's not like, oh, I'm the only one who can't do this, the only one who can't get my shit together. We all struggle. And recognizing that then helps you get out of your own mind. Cool. Um, I suppose you had some examples in there as well when you were yeah. speaking. What are, I suppose, practical examples of doing that in a day-to-day -day kind of life? Okay, so I, I, like, I use myself as an example, like, and then in a very Metcon sense of the word, like, you know, you have this image, you think, right, cool, I should be able to get, like, you know, three sets of seven chest to bar pull-ups in this workout. And then when you don't get it, you're like, I can't believe you're that bad at, you know, pull-ups. And, like, you should be better at this. So the initial thing of, oh, I should be able to get, you know, this amount of pull-ups, like, that's your self-esteem. And then when you don't get it, your self-esteem is rattled. And your first instinct is to go, oh, God, I'm so frustrated. I can't get that lift. I can't make, you know, I can't, you know, I can't, I should be faster at burpees, like, from today's workout. In a Metcon sense, it's... Um, you know, from what Jason Kalipa said, he said, how would you coach your best friend? You know, you don't like ever turn around to someone in the middle of the work and like, how are you so slow at burpees? You know, man, you haven't got your pull up yet. You must really suck at this. You never say that in the gym. Mm -hmm. If you do, you'd be turfed clean out. But we speak to ourselves like that. Yeah. So the first thing would be to recognize that when you're out of breath in a workout, so is everyone else. Okay? When you're thinking, I wish I was stronger, Let's take Sean, like strongest guy in the in the gym. He wishes he was strong as well. You know, like, you know, if you're thinking, oh my God, I'm the only one who struggles with toast to bar. Everybody struggles with toast to bar. It mightn't be at like getting the first one. It might be at getting their, you know, 50th in a row, but it's still a struggle. 
to recognize the university, university, universality. Universality. Say it again. Yeah. Univers Thanks, there. Universality. <laughs> recognizing that. That okay, I'm in the next time, and everyone's struggling. They're either struggling to go faster, they're either struggling to push through their muscle endurance, or maybe they're struggling to get it. You know, like I can't hold a, a handstand, a freestanding handstand, uh -huh. but I can handstand walk, and then you're like the first. the opposite. Yeah. So it's not like one is better than the other. We both have struggled with handstand. Recognize that. And then going back to the Jason Kalipa thing of coaching yourself through it. So first stage is recognize the feeling on getting frustrated. Second stage would be okay, everyone is. And then third stage is that's when you start dealing with it. And that's when you start going, okay, we'll just get these burpees done. Okay, don't worry about the fact that I have 100 to do. Get the next five to then move forward your stage, you know? Get the next pull up. And that's kind of a very real thing. And that's something we, you know, we try and encourage. Mm -hmm. And I keep learning the lesson because, you know, I was like, oh, my shoulder, it, it hasn't come back to the level I want it to. You know, when I'm doing tricep openers and I'm like going, oh, this is really, really, you know, bad. And then I realized I'm fighting with my body, you know, and I know that might sound a little hippie-ish, but all the science backs it up, that if I'm like, that's the end range and it's meant to hit an end range, yep. whether it hits the end range here or way back there, doesn't matter. But recognizing that and being kinder to yourself, you'll actually be able to progress faster because this will be a more positive experience. The more positive experiences you build up, the more likely you are to come back and try it. Okay, so to break it down a little bit then, it's like what you're saying, Jason Kalipa's example, it's talk to yourself and coach yourself the same as you would to a friend, yeah. rather than like try and beat yourself up when something isn't going as you planned. Yeah. Okay. Recognize the suffering and be kind to yourself. Sounds simple enough. Oh yeah, it's, it's very simple. <laughs> it's just it. putting it's it into practice. It's very simple You know, when you're underneath like, you know, the middle round of Fran and those thrusters are yeah. going, that's when, that's when you've got to recognize. Okay, cool. Anything else you want to talk to you about or do we cover everything you wanted to on that? No, I think that's, that's pretty much it. It's, it's a good way of looking at it. You don't always have to be really harsh on yourself. Sometimes a little bit of self-compassion can make you go a little bit further towards your goals. Okay. Thanks, guys. That was episode 25. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Talk to you soon. That seemed really Mike. quick. <laughs> it was, because we never need shite on for about 30 minutes. <laughs>